Hi guys, today I thought I'd do a quick video on setting up Postgres SQL Server and how to monitor to know that it's up and running. So if you haven't used Postgres SQL before, it's a great alternative to MySQL. It's a rational database that supports SQL and it's object oriented. So go ahead and give it a try. It's really easy to set up and get start using it within a few minutes and it even takes easier to start monitoring to make sure that your database and your data your sense of data is up and available. So just keep watching and I'll show you how easy it is to get started. The first step of doing the install is actually doing an update. So it's recommended you do a full update of your operating system, do a yum update. This will install all updated packages as well as OS or kernel packages required. So you're gonna go ahead and wanna do this um, before you install any of the Postgres packages. So this usually takes a few minutes after that, I usually like searching for my packages first because I want to see all the available packages related to what I'm looking at. So if you do a yum search and the package name, it's going to return back to you everything with the word Postgres in it or Postgres in the package description. So if you notice here, there are libraries, there's server, there's clients, there's documentation. So tons of stuff related to Postgres. The, what we want to install is actually the Postgres server. So we're going to do yum install Postgres QL hyphen server and Postgres QL hyphen contribute. These are the two packages we need to install to actually run a Postgres server. So once this is done, it'll just take a couple minutes pretty fast. Once it's done, we'll go ahead and start up and configure our server. Once it's done, the first thing we want to do is initialize our database. So once you install the server package, there's going to be an executable called Postgres hyphen setup init db. So this is going to initialize our database. Um, once this is done, we're going to be able to connect to it. But right after this, we want to make sure that we start up our database. So system control start Postgres. So this is going to start the server right now. And then after that, we want to make sure it starts on server restart. So if our machine shuts down, we want to make sure our Postgres server is started automatically. So if we do system control enable Postgres QL, it's going to start our Postgres server if anything happens to the server itself that may require a restart. Now, once that is done, we're going to take a look at some of the settings required to run the server. So if you look at the password file, etc password, there's notice there's now a Postgres user. So let's go ahead and set a password for that user. So we're going to add root, or if you do sudo, which is really the recommended way, is sudo password and then the username. So Postgres. So whatever the server is, this is going to be used to connect to the database locally on the command line. This is a different, there's a different password to connect remotely to a database. So just realize there are two separate, you can set it to the same thing if you want, but it, technically it's two separate passwords being set here. So I'm going to go ahead and switch user. Next, we're going to access the Postgres command line and issue a command. So we're going to access database template one and template one is a database which configuration is accessible to every other database you'll create in your Postgres server. The command we're going to issue is alter user Postgres with password. So we're resetting the password for the Postgres user on in our template one database. So if the command is successful, it says alter role. Again, we'll access the command line. We're going to access Postgres. So we're accessing the Postgres database. If you do a command, again, we're on the Linux shell here, create DB. So we want to create a new database. We use the create DB and the database name. Then we can access that specific new database, PSQL, the database we just created. And now we're within the database that we just made. And it's this far, it's empty, but it does have the user that we just created with the password. So if we do a slash L, it lists all the database and you see our template zero and template one database, as well as our Postgres database and the one we just created, our new test DB database. Now, if we could go ahead and start adding a table into this database and adding entries right away. Again, you should recognize the syntax, right? It looks like SQL. If you're familiar with SQL um, scripting, then this should look a little familiar. So we'll create our table within our database. Our table is going to be called employees, and then we're going to add our fields. So employee ID with the int 
integer value, our first name, which is a character, right, value. So if you notice there, the first element, right, is the name of the variable or field. And the second one is the field type. So if it's integer or variable. Right after that, we're going to go ahead and insert. Now, there is a difference between single quotes and double quotes. You might have noticed some languages don't distinguish between them, but with Postgres, it should be single quotes to actually insert um, a entry into your database table. Now, if you want to go ahead and check if the entry was added, we could go ahead and do a select command, and the command will display all the entries in our database. So again, we're connecting to our a new database and we're going to go ahead and do a slash L show us all our database and then we could do select asterisk right everything from table employees so it shows us the entry we just created with the employees ID first name and last name and you do a slash Q to quit out of the Postgres database command line now if you go back into root we're going to want to do a few modifications before we start monitoring our Postgres server. So we have our server up, we have a database created, and we have added a tiny entry into it. But if we want to access this from a remote server for monitoring or for accessing the database itself, we have to open up the firewall. So we're going to use the firewall hyphen a command. Uh, I misspelled it right here. I'm going to come back and change it. I'm going to do, put it in the public zone and I'm going to add the port that I want to open up, which the port is 5432 for Postgres SQL server. And I want it to go over TCP. So I'm going to put a slash TCP after that. So it's over the TCP protocol and I want it to be permanently added. So that's going to open up our Postgres port for TCP traffic. So we hit enter, it says success, and then we have to reload the firewall. So that adds an entry into the file, but to reload it so it's actively open, we're going to use the firewall hyphen command hyphen hyphen reload, and upon success, we know the port is now open. So now if we go into Nagios, we're going to be able to use Nagios to actually monitor our Postgres server and make sure it's up. So if you're running a production environment, either you have all your transactions for your business or inventory in your Postgres database, it's very important that it stays up. So we're going to make sure that we use something to monitor and get notified if the server goes down. So I'm going to show you how to use Nagios XI here to actually go in and monitor um, our Postgres server and make sure it is up. By using Nagios built-in wizard, we're able to go ahead and start monitoring our Postgres server really easily. So off the Nagios XI main page, there is configuration wizard. And if you search here, you click on the little database icon on the top and it'll just narrow down the search for you. So it shows all the databases you're able to monitor. If you scroll down there, you can monitor a Postgres database or a Postgres server or a Postgres query. So you get a few options. I'm gonna do server. So I'm going to specify my Postgres server. You put host name or IP address. So I'm going to put in the IP address. The port is the default port. Now this is the password you set when you did that um, alter user command in template one. So if you get the password wrong, I'll show you at the end how to go in and make sure you can change the password correctly on here. But that is the password it's looking for here. It's not looking for the Linux user in the etc password file. It is looking for the Postgres um, user password inside the database itself. So we're gonna monitor it every few minutes, five minutes. I'm gonna go with the default here. Um, you can get notified yourself. You can notify all administrators. So I'm gonna select all administrators for this. And the default administrator. It's running on one of my Linux servers. You could add additional groups such as database servers or Postgres servers here. It doesn't have to be um, a Linux server so you can also customize it here if you have a number of database servers you want to monitor or group together then we can go ahead and apply now when it first does this unless you go through and open up the security of your Postgres server it's going to fail so I'm going to show you the files you need to modify on your Postgres server that's going to allow you to monitor or access it remotely so right here is Postgres backend connection and Postgres connection status. 
uh, it says pending now, but it is going to fail. So what we want to do is go back to our Postgres server. So we're going to get off our Nagios XI server and let's go take a look at the configuration files within our Postgres installation. So if you go under var lib pgsql slash data, there's two files in here that we need to modify to um, allow remote connection. The first one is pgsba.conf. Now, if we go in here, we're going to allow access from remote servers. So you want to scroll down to the bottom and you'll see a few lines that have been, um, that are not commented out with the pound symbol. So you see local all, and then host all local, and then it has an IP address. So we're going to add our own entry that says host all within our subnet. So I'm going to restrict it to the subnet of um, the machines that really just need to access it. So it doesn't need to be accessible to every IP address in the world. So just host all databases, all users. And then we're going to say um, 10.0.1 dot zero slash 24. So it's just really going to be our network. And then we're going to say MD5, which is a um, password encryption authentication protocol. Um, so it's saying we want to authenticate our users. The second file we want to take a look at is to open up listening what port we're listening on so in the same directory we want to look at postgresql.com so in here there's a line that's called listen and it's listen addresses so we're going to comment it out so if you see it on yours it would have a comment we want to make sure we add an asterisk for all ip addresses to listen to now remember in the previous file we say only certain ip address connect this is saying we can open up to all IP address it will listen for, but only allow connections for a certain restricted subnet. So we're going to put an asterisk here. We're going to save it. And now we have to restart our Postgres server. So we do our system control, restart Postgres QL, and it's going to restart our server with our new configurations. Now our Nagios XI server should be able to connect to the Postgres server and verify that the connection can be established and that the server is up. Now I did tell you I was going to show you where to go and modify a setting if you accidentally put in the incorrect password that needs to uh, be used to authenticate to our Postgres server. So if we go under configuration or configure and then there should be an option that says core configure manager. So we're going to go in and look at the service that we created that has been created for our Postgres backend connection. And right there you see like two little tools, looks like a wrench and a flathead. And if you look in here, there is an option right here under common settings. And if you look at this command line, there is a DB pass. So that is the password we created for our database user to use to connect. You go ahead and run and check that verify the command is successful right here. So I recommend running it, check the command, it actually works. If it works, go ahead and save it. And then you ha have to remember to apply the configuration before it will actually show up on your Nagios dashboard and that the connection in fact does work for that um, service. So if we go back to our host and look at the services, we'll see that our now both our Postgres connection status and Postgres backend connections will both work. You can also go in and force immediate check to actually make sure this works immediately so you don't have to wait the five minutes or 20 minutes, whatever you might have said for the next check to occur. And you see that both of them show okay status and that they're both successful in connecting. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this is helpful. Be sure you set up your database and monitor it today and uh, subscribe to get updates. Bye.